Welcome to Infinity and Beyond, a podcast that takes a look back at the works of Pixar animation before moving onward to their newest films. And now for the Dino Western movie nobody asked of them, but they made anyway. The Good Dinosaur. It's so not good. <laughs> it's... Uh, well, oh. <laughs> I have so many questions. About... Oh my goodness. I'll see if I can answer them. This just, one. Just why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> That's my trash baby for you. Okay. It is said, your trash baby. The first half of the movie, I was like, I hate this and I don't want to watch it. <laughs> but then it got better and I actually liked it. It's a, I'm not going to lie. It's at the bottom of my Pixar list. But um, <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> but I got why it was a trash baby. Because the ending, I went, aww. And like... I came around to it, and I would watch it again, honestly, but it is definitely a trash baby. Those are the <laughs> right words. I'm going to be very honest with you. I don't think I ever want to watch this again. <laughs> so Cars, Jared, 2, <laughs> Cars 2, you can watch with, like, ironic enjoyment of, like, being a so bad it's good type of production, but this, on the other hand, I don't know why I'm talking so slow and quiet, um... It's okay. This movie just did a number on you. <laughs> it was a depresso episode. Uh, oh no! I'm supposed to do the bio for this one. We can get to that in a sec, Jaren. Wait, 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 wait! Who the gosh darn heck are we? Gosh, I forgot. It's been a while since we've done this. <laughs> well, oh, no. I'm Daniel Hudson. I'm I'm Jaren Gravely somehow. And I'm Nora Jones. I just kicked something. Hope you didn't hear that. Oh well. Uh, I did. It's okay. Okay, it's fine. But yeah, this was not a good movie. <laughs> no, it isn't. I mean, okay, okay. They tried so hard that it's painful. I think that's the main issue. I can see that they tried. And then there were a few things that I don't know how got into a children's movie. Um, because I was scarred, and I'm 17, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, this one, this one is a fascinating um, behind-the-scenes story um, for it. It, in a way, it got it worse than Brave did behind the scenes. Oh, yes. It, okay, it is above Cars 2, uh, above Cars 2. No, it's not. Brave on my list. It's Those above are my bottom... Brave? No, 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 it's below Brave. My okay. bottom three are uh, from best to worst. Brave, Good Dinosaur, Cars 2. Let me look at my bottom three. Oh, y'all are not going to like my bottom three. <laughs> well, I already know Wally is there. Yeah, it's the Good Dinosaur, Bugs Life, and Wally. Oof. Yeah, I mean, that, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, Cars 2 is bottom four. <laughs> Let me see. I, I can pull up my list. I can tell you right now, um, this one isn't in my bottom three. Because it's your trash. It's your trash, baby. <laughs> it's my trash, baby. Uh, it's your forky. It's your forky. Oh, it's that's forky. that's that's coming to Disney Plus at the beginning of February. So. Ooh. Fabulous. Yeah, just in time for our, our episode on it. Wow. Where did I put my list for? Oh, ah. I changed my profile photo because I realized it. my profile photo looks sort of Christmassy with my red jacket. All right. Well, uh, not Christmassy anymore. I can't not see it at the moment. I'm sure it'll show up on the video, though. Excellent. Oh, yeah. Anyway, oh, wait, uh, my bottom three, um, best to worst, Cars, A Bug's Life, Cars 2. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just I be happy for you down there. Life at the bottom three, though. I think when it's time to do the rankings, I'll do them as like a tier list. <laughs> yeah, we got to figure out how time, we're going to but... do the rankings videos, because like, I have ideas. <laughs> 
I'm still not sure if we should do the rankings at the end of the Toy Story 4 episode or at the end of Onward. I feel like before Onward, and then we can do an update yeah. of where we place Onward. Onward will be like recency bias. That's true. Cause... Because I came out of the theater seeing Rise of Skywalker, and I was like, that was really good. And now I'm like, that wasn't very good. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I kind of started hating Rise of Skywalker halfway through, but then I almost threw up at the end of that movie. The new new not one? Even, the new yeah, new not even, I saw it. I liked it. I'm not even being hyperbolic. Like, I, I legitimately felt ill. <laughs> and I was, I was worried I'd have to step away and just projectile vomit. <laughs> I liked it. I mean, good for you, Nora. You're, you're, you deserve to like whatever you like. It's oh, just, I watched that... part one with Gideon, Star Wars. Nice. All right. I didn't like that one that much. Wait, 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 wait. What was part one? Episode was... one, like okay, good, the prequel. Good. Yeah, don't it worry. It wasn't horrible. It's just I've seen a lot of clips and like a lot of sections of the other movies that I liked far better. Good. And it wasn't yeah. bad. It Phantom was just Menace sort of used by the whole storyline because it just all oh everyone is <laughs> like I was like just. Just save Naboo. No yeah. one can really say what it's about, honestly. Yeah, I really, I, like, I kind of zoned out for 20 minutes and then came back in and the plot was still the same and nothing had really changed. Taxation of trade routes. And, <laughs> and anyway, George back... Is Phantom most... Menace is hard to describe its plot. Is the good dinosaur's plot equally hard? Nora, it's your turn. It's your <laughs> turn. I, <laughs> I don't envy you. I forgot I was doing this, so this could be worse than the Wally one. Bear with me, please. <laughs> I'll jump in if you need help. I most I'm not. Will. Okay, so I believe we start the movie. Oh, I remember how it starts. There's three eggs, and they all hatch, and the very large one, guess what, had the tiniest one in it. No one suspected that joke at all, but <laughs> they're dinosaurs. I forgot to say that. They're dinosaurs. They have eggs. As the opposed eggs to hatch. chickens. One is a boy that's rambunctiously boyish. The other is a girl. Well, I don't know if you really know, can tell their genders right now, but just know it's a boy and a girl. And then a third boy, which will be our lead person. I don't remember his name. Our and lead, Arlo. 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 And the parents' dad has a very southern accent for some reason. I couldn't tell you why. But They're they, just trying to make it aren't they farmers as if the farming sequences didn't do that enough that, it, and also this movie is kind of a western so the accents work i guess it's so bad and i have so many comments about that later <laughs> um anyway you don't get this at first but dinosaurs are like the people you like you forgot the, the prologue people. All the little critters are like what animals are to us now in the real world. But, but okay, dinosaurs equal people. Just think of it like that. Nora, you but, forgot the like very beginning. That is the very beginning. The egg. The meteor. What meteor? What meteor? I blocked it out, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I can remember it because it was like two in the morning and I watched it. Uh yeah, there is a, a sequence meteor part where... wasn't even the bad part of the movie. It was just like the no. opening. It was like Here's the only the... good part, in my opinion. I don't remember this. <laughs> Can you tell no, I don't like The, the this meteor very much. that was supposed to wipe out the dinosaur flew over the sky and didn't make them go extinct. And then 65 oh, million years. Oh, I remember that. I didn't get it. I was just like, well, that's fun. Let's watch the movie now, please. <laughs> anyway, the eggs hatch. <laughs> and so you're on this farm and because dinosaurs own farms apparently and they harvest corn nothing else just corn but they built this mill thing and the mill has stones and the papa dinosaur says now y'all gotta put your mark on here mama's <laughs> gonna put her mark because me and mama earned it and so they put these big dinosaur print marks on it and then one of the kids goes up to do it and he's like uh 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 you gotta earn your mark and I'm like okay and so then the brother arlo's brother he does something fancy the sister does something fancy and they both have their marks and arlo doesn't have his and i'm like wow great parenting 
way to subject your children to <laughs> feel lesser than themselves when their siblings have accomplished something that they haven't. Because Arlo yep. now is the only one without a mark. And mm, I wonder whose fault that is. Maybe the bad parenting setup. Anyway, um, Arlo has a job. They've all been given jobs. He has to go like feed these turkey chicken looking dinosaur boys and they scare him so he gets scared and he goes ah and he doesn't get his mark and his brother's kind of mean to him his sister's kind of eh. he's kind of the outcast of the family his dad says arlo it's time for you to get your mark we're gonna do this he doesn't say that line just like that but that's basically what he says <laughs> they go on a um a field trip per se to get him his mark and make him a dinosaur man boy thing and what did they do oh wait no i forgot a very important part the other main character this is what happens that makes him go on the journey so his dad his dad's like arlo there's critters eating our corn you need to catch the critter and kill it so that our corn is safe so arlo sets up a trap and this is so he can get his mark and it catches the beast critter person and he goes up to it and it is a little human boy that apparently acts like an animal like they've sort of switched roles if you know what i'm saying like the dinosaur is a human personification thing and the 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 little boy is like yep. an, a it's wild so dog. clever but they it's... do nothing with it <laughs> <sighs> anyway so trash baby. Yeah, um, he like tries to kill it but he can't because one He's Arlo and he's scared, and two, that would be very gruesome for a children's movie. And so, the little thingy, what is the, oh, Spot? We don't know that yet, though. Escapes and runs away. I almost said Spike, like the dog from Spike, Red Rex. I don't know. Okay. Oh, it's Spot. It's definitely yeah, Spot. It's spot. I just, I just huh. Spike. Ha. Huh. I was right. I got one name right. That's all I can ever do. I will mess up all their names forever after that. Anyway. I couldn't remember any of their names of Arlo. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he runs away. His dad gets mad. He says, Arlo, you got a man up or something sexist like that. And he <laughs> grabs Arlo. And then they go on their field trip. And basically, it's to go find the little critter. And the dad gets aggressive. Arlo gets hurt. And he's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I pushed you. I pushed you too hard. It's time to go back. We'll go back, Arlo. Because... All of a sudden, he's not a jerk dad, and then a storm, hurricane, wind thing comes. It's like from the from the river. Follow the river, and you can get back home. And that's what he says. And so this hurricane comes. It's a plot and, point later too. And he, the dad sees it, and he's like, "Oh, nubbit!" And so he throws Arlo back up on the rocks, but he's too big and Largo to get back up there. And so he literally just stares at his child. He screams, "Run, Arlo!" proceeds to stare at him and gets killed. It's very Man of Steel. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. And Arlo's like, no! And he's like, I like that no. movie. And so that happens, and that's depressing, and so you fast forward a little bit. Not really. You just go back to the it, cut screen. Yeah, it's like a fade okay. to black, yeah. Fade to black out. So Arlo's back home. His mom's there. Everyone looks sad. His mom's trying to pick the corn on her own now. And she drops it. She's like, Arlo, you're going to have to step it up. You need to help Mama with her corn so we don't starve before the first snow. Because when the first snow happens, we are screwed, baby. And we can't eat corn anymore. So he's like, okay, Mom. And so he's like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And so he does the corn stuff. Stuff. He puts it in that um, stone thing. That's where they store it, that stone thing that they put their prints on. So he puts it in there, and then all of a sudden, he sees the little critter boy. And he gets mad, and he says, this is your fault my papa's dead. Not the fact that, you know, the storm or you being there. No, the critter's fault. It's his fault solely. Not any other factor at all that we've already seen in the movie. Critters. That's what's so. called projection. <laughs> so... <laughs> He chases him, and guess what? They get tangled up, and they both fall in the river. Rut row, and there's... Is there a storm there? Is there a storm? Um, yeah. Yeah. No, not when they fall in the river. No, there's but like the, like river, the river's active. Like, she's flowing. Yeah. It, and so, rough yeah. River. <laughs> it's a rough river. So they fall in the river. 
Arlo's like, oh no, and he passes out, and he wakes up, and he's all by himself. And is, is his leg trapped under the tree at that point? Uh, no, yeah. he tries to go after sure. berries or something. He tries to get to berries, falls down, and the rocks trap him. Oh, okay. So Arlo is all by himself and hungry. He steps on a rock, gets some berries, rocks fall, gets trapped under the rock like that man got his arm trapped under a rock in a cavern in real life. That's what I thought when I saw that. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? That yeah. Kind of story? Yeah, yeah, that guy. That's what that made me think of. So he just sleeps there because there's like nothing he can do. I mean, I mean, I'm sure there's something, but he just falls asleep. And I'm like, okay, man, live your best life. And so... <laughs> Yeah, and when he wakes up, there's a hole under his leg that someone dug out for him. I wonder who it could be. And so he's freed. He tries to basically survive and make a little shelter thing. The best part in the movie are these little tiny raccoon critter things. I don't know. Just laugh at him. That's, that's the best one part of the movie. Yeah, I don't know what they're called. They just laugh at him. And he makes a pathetic little shelter. Then the critter, the little animal boy, comes up to him. And he's like, you, not you again, blah, blah, blah. But the crittery thingy has an animal, and he, like, offers it for him. Basically, he's trying to get offer Arlo food because he's nice now. And Arlo rejects it several times until he gets some berries. Arlo eats the berries. He's like, yummy, can you get me some more? But then the critter takes him to show him where the berries are. They get the berries, and they start bonding is this where that weird rhino tree comes in yet, or is this where they get high? Uh, uh, they get high first. <laughs> okay. So okay. They... Hey, hey, wait, guys. You know how we've made fun of Doug Walker on this show? Like, giving him endless crap? I'm going to credit him. Sort of. This movie is full of big-lipped alligator moments. Big Daniel, lip? You know what I'm talking about. A I, I know the phrase alligator moment. alligator moment, yeah. It's a phrase that stems from he who shall not be named, uh, but already was named, uh, involving a sequence in which something comes right out of nowhere, is ridiculous, is like big and over the top, and is bizarre, and is never referenced again. Mm. It's a big little alligator moment. There are several in this movie. This whole movie is that. Yeah. Like, why is it the good dinosaur? I, anyway, we'll talk about it later. Or like the bad dinosaur. What were I, they thinking? I just, See, okay, I, I cleansed my nostalgia critic reference with an angry video game nerd reference. There we are. Balance. Okay. Nora has no idea what I'm talking about. No, but I'm glad you're happy. <laughs> Let the poor girl I'm not happy. Else. I'm never happy. Oh, no. That's just because you've seen the good dinosaur recently. It'll wear off. <laughs> Anyway, so I need to take a slow moment in the narration here. Let me stress the dinosaur and the child eat berries that are expired or taste strange. They're like, whoa, these make me feel funny. Proceed to eat them and have at least like a two minute montage of getting high. It it's like 30 so seconds. Still. Calm down. <laughs> and they, they, I, I can't. Like, I can't. I'll, I'll talk about it later, but I can't. So, after they get high, oh my gosh. I, after they do that, they um, are in the woods again, because that's what they do this whole film. And I don't remember what happens after this. I think he spot runs away into this weird rhino creature thing that has all these animals on him and he's like that's a special critter there he can smell out I things. hated that scene so much <laughs> he's, he, he can smell out things I think because Spotted just beat up someone or something he's like he can defend us it was the worst yeah. scene ever but basically what came out of it is they found out Spot's name Spot and that Arlo he belongs to Arlo because Arlo discovered his name so after that they're still lost and then is this where they find the freaky bird people I, I um think so. well there's another storm 
there's another storm. Arlo runs away like a coward because he's learned nothing. Um, and after the, the storm passes, that's when thundercloud after, appears. Yeah, after the storm passes, the thundercloud hippie bird murderer appears and it's like the storm will provide and so the storm he's like follow me we'll help you he he says we have to look around for survivors first and arlo's like okay and so they look around they find a little critter and they're like look we found him in the storm and then the bird full out engulfs this critter in front of everyone on the screen and has half his body hanging out and i was disturbed i was disturbed it was worse than the high scene anyway we will come back to that later. That happens. Then they find Spot and Spot's a critter. So I keep saying critter because that's what they call him in the movie, by the way. Spot's a critter. So they yeah, eat. So they want to eat him. There's a whole thing. Arlo cries out for help. There's some T-Rexes. This plot is getting too long. I'm just going to try to speak to it. There's some T-Rexes. But he doesn't see their T-Rexes at first. He's like, no, no. And they realize it's T-Rexes. But since they're T-Rexes, they chase off the thunderclappers or whatever. And they're safe. And so they're with the T-Rexes. And they're talking about how they have to go get their cattle or whatever because the T-Rexes have lost their cattle because everyone is a cowboy in this movie for some reason. I don't know. And so there's a whole scene with the cattle that's literally pointless to the movie and they get the T-Rexes cattle back and they're like, you're all right, Arlo. And you're like, okay, thank you. I did not need that information. Thank you for adding this 15-minute subplot that no one asked for. So... And then they're by a campfire, they're talking about their scars, and they wake up the next day, and they are continuing to move the cattle, yada, yada, yada. Arlo is accepted by them and learned some important lesson, I don't know. And um, they're running along with the cattle, and then he sees, look, it's Blue Ridge, Blue Tooth, High Point Mountain, whatever it's called that he's from. And so they're like, you're all right, Arlo, you're going to do great. And he's like, thanks. So then they leave well not they arlo and spot they leave and they're heading to blue ridge and everything's way too happy and i click to see and i'm like okay there's like 35 minutes left there's no way this is going to end happy before something bad happens so they have a really good time for a while for and it seems bad he's talking about how good the home is and then there's this old man they see in the distance because spot goes oh because he's like a wolf and they hear an awoo back and you're like oh, a human because oh yeah there's this whole thing about family earlier and you found out Spot's parents died and that Arlo's dad died and he was sad about it but you already knew that and they just talk about family because family is important and blah 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 and Arlo's like no we're gonna keep moving which is the most selfish thing I think I've ever heard in my life but um so they keep going and he's like you're you're gonna like it at my home instead and you're like okay and so then they go but then the thunder clappers come back because why not well, there's a storm because, because this movie uses storms for every plot point. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't. Talking about this movie makes me dislike it more. Um, there, there's a storm, and so the thunderclappers come out. They do this cool animation thing that looks like sharks. I did appreciate that. Spot gets taken. There's basically a whole twenty minute montage. I don't know. And um, where he gets Spot back and he's finally brave and he saves Spot and it's this whole dramatic thing. And I actually don't mind that scene because it's rather nice and rather dramatic. And this is where I was starting to go, hey, this is not bad. And but it's a trash baby. So then they fall off this waterfall because it has to do with the river again. Because why not? Well, let, well, let's let's make him redeem himself in the river. So the Spot, not Spot, Arlo fights off the thunderclappers. It's pretty dope. Then they're safe. Then they see the old man again, but he has a family. And so after this symbolic, this is your family spot thing, spots with them. And Arlo goes back to Blue Ridge, Blue Tip, Mountain Point, Tooth Shark Land, Mountain Blue thing. And gets back up there and sees his mama. And she's like, Arlo, I'm so glad you're home. And that's basically where it ends, except it pans out on the freaking stone wall tunnel thing that started this whole thing with the bad parenting pressuring their kids to meet a certain achievement and now it has Arlo's print on it. Congratulations Arlo. The end. That's the end of the trash baby. Woo! Thank you Nora. Welcome. (laughs) You've done good kid. Thank you. The high scene. Why is there a scene? (laughs) Nora, you're doing good. You left your mark. I'm 
real proud Please of you. start with the dang mark. I have so many issues with the freaking mark. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, guys, there's a, there's a lot this movie has to let us talk about. Where do you want to start? Uh, For starters. Why? Just why? <laughs> so Nora's still processing. Jaren? I don't like the character designs. I don't either. Okay. That was the first thing I thought. Okay, that's I thought I've never disliked Pixar animation, and I don't like the way the dinosaurs are designed. Okay, well. I honestly think you'd probably be okay with it if it weren't for the environments. Because the environments are so realistic versus the dinosaurs, which are very cartoony in comparison. Yeah. Well, it looks... Okay, the, the, the two things I will give it. It looks beautiful. The landscapes are mesmerizing oh, sure. looking. Yes. And the score is really, really good. As is, yeah, fairly much. I, like, I've never that. heard of... I never heard of who of the the, the composers uh, until now. Uh, it wasn't Randy Newman. It wasn't Thomas Newman. And it wasn't uh, Michael Giacchino. It was um, Michael Dana and Jeff Dana. Uh, they did the score for the Life of Pi, which is a pretty good movie. Mm. Uh, oh yeah, they did. I got some other stuff. Moneyball, Life of Pi, stuff, yeah. Little Miss Sunshine. <gasps> Little Miss Sunshine. I love that movie. Also, the best penguin surfing movie, Surf's Up. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's know. the trash baby right there. No. <laughs> I don't like Happy oh. Feet, Surf's Up, any of the penguin movies. They're also doing the score for Onward. That should be interesting. Okay, well, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Pardon me as I make an ASMR sound, which is typically taking a sip out of this Arizona tea can. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> Go for it. No, 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 no. I was excusing myself. Oh, you, you didn't oh, do it. Oh, okay, okay. We good. missed it. Yeah, because I didn't want to okay. make it. I, yeah. I get really thirsty during these podcasts, so I actually brought drinks into the room. Well, I always run away for like 30 seconds to get water. <laughs> it's a tradition at this point. So, Anyway, me- the score and the visuals, except for the character designs, are, are very nice. Yes, the nature so, is very nice animation. That's pretty nice. For me, I... I kind of like the way the character designs clash with the environments. Because, well, I have a reason, if you'll allow. The, the man's explain. <laughs> I'm sorry. So it makes the dinosaurs feel like they don't belong, and that's true because they're supposed to be extinct. Oh yeah, it's one a, other thing. Bad timeline. So oh. that just that just works for me taking that into account. Did One other thing I, I do like is that uh, so the strange creatures they find, like there's a snake. It looks like a snake at first, but it has legs. Like it's, it's almost yeah. like there's... the how evolution could have differed in this timeline. But also still produce humans. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you just... There's like a certain humans. level of suspension of disbelief. You just have to... Talk, so. so, I have a question. Is the asteroid in the beginning supposed to explain why there's humans and dinosaurs there at the same time? Because that's yeah. a drastic time gap, my friends. A yeah, drastic so that, timeline, if you ask that's me. That's supposed to be the meteor that would have wiped out the dinosaurs, except it missed. But so the, the dinosaurs actually, just aren't extinct. But the Ice Age wiped out the dinosaurs, I thought. Yes, as Arnold Schwarzenegger, as Mr. Freeze and Batman and Robin once said, what killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! <laughs> we don't talk about that so, movie yeah. nearly enough. Well, this is a Pixar podcast. <laughs> I'm saying in general. We as like a society. I guess because the Joker's not in it. A mm. fat credit card! Oh, oh. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I, I won't beat around the bush. Uh, I like this one. <laughs> I don't hate it. <laughs> That's okay. It's not even like a guilty pleasure type of deal because I don't believe in guilty pleasures. I just, I unabashedly enjoy it. 
like listen i well, cool. enjoyed it i did not particularly like the third the first first 30 ish minutes those were the most painful for me but after that the journey and the wilderness other than those two very wrong scenes was pretty good the last 30 minutes i give a solid hey not bad so it's the opposite of wally for you as a whole i did not like it it's my still my least favorite pixar i'm, movie. I'm gonna be up front i'm surprised you guys don't like the pet collector scene the what scene? no it just weird me out for some reason okay. and i like weird stuff <laughs> that's just funny laugh, but i was so confused at first this is Dream Smasher. He protects me from having unrealistic goals. I thought okay, I didn't funny. mind that. No, I thought it was very funny. I was confused by it because I was like, what? Why? Why? Yeah, why a lot of... Having free work, labor, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> a, a lot of scenes in this movie exist solely for like just reasons like the whole pet collector scene is like establishing, oh, Arlo's going to stick with Spot now because yeah, one strange, creepy old man told him it's dangerous out here, kid. Yeah. yeah. To like, show the growth that he almost abandoned him or killed him. One of my uh, it's... main issues with the movie is normally Pixar has very good comedic timing, but this movie also tried to make some scenes very funny and you can tell they're trying very hard and they're not that funny like the comedic timing isn't that good or you expect the joke to happen you're just waiting for it yeah i don't think i laughed once i did laugh at the pet scene once i think that that and um the little raccoons laugh while they were watching him build watching the arlo uh, yeah whatever they are i think on average, this one just has also less jokes per minute than most Pixar films. Yeah, but yeah. the jokes they added were unnecessary, and it was obvious they were just trying to make you laugh. When it, I, 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 I wasn't. Happy. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't what know. few jokes are there are fine for me, uh, but everything with like thunderclap, nah, that doesn't land. <laughs> no. I don't know why I, I disliked it so much. I don't think I was in like a bad mood when I was watching it. I just didn't like it. It was two a.m. and you were tired. <laughs> well, I no, I was pretty. I was of clear mind. I I, <laughs> I started it well, knowing it was Daniel's trash baby, and I was like, okay, this is going to be <laughs> interesting. Let's try to have an open mind. But I was thinking more. Ugh. But I really did try. But then I saw the dinosaur animation just in the bar, and I was like, okay, don't like that. And I did not like the voice acting in the opening scene. Like, it improved as we went, but maybe it was the lines or just the writing. It was all very cheesy to me. Oh, that's not the, good cheesy. Not a good, like, the opening scene was very cheesy. Like, oh, look at him. He's a rambunctious one. This is going to be a big egg. Oh, sweetie. And, like, I don't know. It, it felt like very something weird. from, like, a grade C animation studio. You know what I'm talking about? Like, not, not Pixar. Like, a grade not C even... animation studio wouldn't even, like, bother with this. Like, it would just be manic energy, like, illumination or blue sky. Just. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, like, Let's just be Pixar done. and <laughs> Disney are, like, S-tier. DreamWorks sometimes S-tier. Uh... Yeah, more like a blue sky or elimination type deal. Or... Well, again, like I don't, I can't see an illumination movie having something like the opening few minutes just because. Oh, no, 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 no. Illumination's too frantic and too like. Yeah, over exactly. The top. Like, but, um, yeah, they're more likely just... to do stupid shit than <laughs> cheesy shit. <laughs> go crazy, go stupid. But it was all very cheesy. And also, they didn't really have the dad's personality in order. He kind of had a split personality going on there. I was and when he of, died, I, mean, I, I didn't really like, feel anything. I was like, Pixar, you yeah, no. They tried to do Lion King. They tried yeah, to do Lion they tried King. to make him Mufasa. They, 
they even yeah, had a but on the reason Mufasa it's works is because he dies like almost halfway through that movie. But he's and so he in, a lot before of then he's shown as being very noble and kind and overall like a good dad. Yeah, and Arlo's dad is. He's not bad, but I question some of his parenting motives. I mean, outside of that one part where he gets mad, like, he's never outwardly a dick to Arlo, but the whole no. cutting him out of the mark thing. Like, he, yeah. does, he does try to help Arlo earn it. It's just... The mark shouldn't exist in the first place. Yeah, that, that was very much a thing that you wanted to introduce it at the beginning of the movie so it pays off at the end, but it weakens the beginning of the movie. Yeah. A good deal. Yeah. Also, why does it have to be that one specific job for Arlo to complete? Like the the feeding thing. I mean, it changes. Because he's too small and weak to do anything else. Uh, it's... Uh, uh. Mm-hmm. it's like they were trying to do Nemo again, because Nemo has Lucky Finn, and like you know, you try and... to do these things, but you can't, Nemo. And they literally do near to nothing about his brother literally bullying him. <laughs> yeah, I was expecting him to be like an antagonist throughout. No, oh, they're yeah, not no, fighters. But... I don't not a villain, like... but like an antagonist, like a bully, you know. But where like, was... not evil, but where would the brother have like learned to do that? Because obviously his parents aren't doing it. It just I was like, why? Why are you filling in that natural stereotype that one like his brother's gonna pick on him or be mean to him? Because he's all jockey and his little brother isn't doing it. Why can't they just sort of support him and do something? It just bothered me. It was hey, at a... least the brother had some kind of character, unlike the sister. Oh, yeah. I don't even remember what her thing was. Um, she was just there. She was just girl. Like the, the only moment where she got like any sort of personality is where she tricked the older brother into doing her work for her. Okay, think... yeah, that's true. But even that then, was about, that didn't really say uh, much about her character. She's smart. I think she's the smart one. Uh, that was probably the idea. But you spend so little time with Arlo's family. His family and honestly gets just, on my nerves. I'm like, stay with the T-Rexes. <laughs> okay, the one one other good thing I'll give it is that one guy was pretty cool. The, oh, yeah. Uh, the guy with the voice from the truck commercials. I think his name was Butch. Uh, oh, new Ram superpower truck. Yeah. Able to I, push I enjoy the anything. campfire scene with the T Rexes. That's yeah, that was that was a good scene. But he was also in a Star Is Born, Lady Gaga. That guy. Oh. The mustache man. No, oh, well, good for him. He's a good actor. I don't remember his name, but he's a good actor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the I T-Rexes I recognize his voice are, are a pretty fun digression uh, I know Dino Western probably didn't work for you guys I thought it was an interesting idea to try <laughs> this oh, movie does yeah, yeah. But... Uh, I hated it I hated it so much <laughs> <laughs> I mean who who thinks I'm going to do a dinosaur movie with humans in it and it's also going to be a Western. Like, I admire that ambition. But what if they did that and made it good? That would have <laughs> also been nice. <laughs> well, what if, what if it were purple? I think my issue was, is I was so thrown off by the whole dinosaurs are the people now farming thing. Because I thought this movie was about something so different. I Wait, thought... what did you think it was about? I never really seen the trailers or much anything about the movie. I just thought, well, I'll say what I really thought it was at the end, but I thought the humans were humans, dinosaurs were dinosaurs, the dinosaurs couldn't talk, this little boy, and I knew he looked like that. I saw, I don't know what I saw. When I was younger, I saw like a commercial on TV, I saw like civilized people, but it must have been like something else or a different movie. And then like this little boy, in the wilderness and like he finds his dinosaurs his friend i thought the movie was pete the dragon but animated that's that's what i thought i was okay. trying to think how you could have gotten that <laughs> but um i think i'm it's more because like pete the fascinated dragon, i think pete the dragon may have come out around the same time and i'm pretty sure i confused the two it's but... dragons a very old movie like from yeah. the 70s well, they, it. they, what? No, no, they made a live version they, they made, made a live action version Mm-hmm. They did 
How'd that slip my radar? When was this? I don't remember this. I think me, it was around the up. same time. Maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. Each Dragon came out in 2016. So a little bit Dragon after. 2016. This was well, like I'm November. Not... This I'm was not... November of 2015. This movie came out. Yeah, this was a late 2015. I think Peach Dragon was like spring 2016. So a couple of months there. I just confused them. I, was... I knew you in spring 2016. Yes, you did. That's wow. weird. We didn't have any deep existential conversations about Pete's Dragon, though, so. <laughs> no. No. I was thinking that the little boy somehow grew up in the wilderness and was sort of uncivilized and finds this dinosaur, and the dinosaur helps him come out, and then they see the civilized people, and they live as a dinosaur and boy and face struggles together. That was not what this movie was. Uh, that sounds like a much better movie. Yeah. So I think that also... That's not this movie. That also did not help. My dinosaurs are people, and they're also Western. That It, it just didn't help that plot line. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did like... I, I can see. ...being Western. Like, it's an interesting attempt. And yeah, it's, they tried. It's, it's the gold awful. star with the comic sans. You tried on it. There's just too it's not much. Awful. This movie. <laughs> I've there's, seen worse. Mm, there's yeah. too much. There, they, there's and too I think, much. I think one of the things that, because like a lot of people are turned off to this movie, I've seen this one at the bottom of like most Pixar rankings, even below Cars 2 for some people. Cars 2 is at least like entertaining. So like, yeah. this movie is just really rough on arlo like the world kicks him when he's down more often what's, than not what's sad is i don't really like arlo i don't either he's annoying there's, and there's I'm, not a lot to him i usually like the like sad sack everything is terrible to me character but like he's just not very he's not an interesting main character he's annoying there's about as much going on with him as there is with Flick from A Bug's Life. Like, hey, he Flick is, is my boy. A Bug's Life is, is my just, trash baby. He is just his archetype, and that's pretty much it. Mm. We can find bigger bugs. So come here and fight. That's like his character arc. Oh, I'm the eccentric inventor, but I like my boy Flick. He's cool. Were they on a rush to make this movie or something? Daniel, do you want to explain the oh. behind-the-scenes problems? Because that's there are I a, really a moment. I do. I do want to get to a few more notes before we leave just the plot behind. Okay. Um, so the family scene where Spot and Arlo like communicate to each other how their parents aren't around anymore. I liked that scene a lot. That's really good. I think more scenes like that would have maybe pulled this movie out of box office bombing. Yeah. That well, that's one thing I want to discuss. Why did it bomb? It had the Pixar name. Like, people who don't know the first thing about, like, movies, other than, oh, I know what movies are, I see them every now and then, I think I know a uh, few movies. Uh, they so. know what Pixar is, especially people with, like, little three-year-old kids who don't understand animation. They just call everything, oh, have you seen that new cartoon? Uh... That I think it's a so, Disney and it's Shrek or something, but like I have a, a few theories. The first one being a much better Pixar movie came out just a few months earlier. Yeah, a very good movie, which we talked about last time, and honestly, I think it's even better after we discussed it. And I another held it thing, in pretty high regard. Another thing that probably hurt this movie. So most families like don't go to the movies all that often, maybe two or three times a year. Yeah. And in 2015, there was one Not... big movie that came out like less than a month after this one that I think oh, a lot Force of people... Were... Yeah. I think Star Wars kind of kind of punched away a lot of uh, competition even in the weeks before it came out. I remember when it came out that I, I didn't go see it, but it was I was still heavily watching Disney and all that stuff and i can still imagine 
the voiceovers that they did for those cartoons, go see Disney, or not Disney, or Pixar's The Good Dinosaur in theaters now. And I remember not really knowing what it was, but they did behind the scenes stuff. And I remember thinking that they had just did a cartoon movie. And I was like, oh, wow, they're coming out with them fast now. And blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> Yeah, no. Oh, to be young again. Yeah, this... This movie, um, I I got to see this one in theaters actually, and that was um, <laughs> the experience of seeing like the environmental animation on the big screen. That took a long time to be topped, just because like it looks good on your computer. It looks amazing in the theater. The environmental sure. animation was gorgeous. Yeah, I, it really was, and the fact that the credits are just shots of the landscapes. Yeah, that helps. I like, that. <laughs> like, I think it was probably Spider Verse and or Missing Link that uh, eventually dethroned just my. Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. <laughs> Finally, long have I waited for someone to reference that movie. It was not me. And thus, it is now your burden to bear, my dear Danny boy. Daniel referenced it once, like, a few podcasts ago, but he said it without saying it, and then you said, well, now you've mentioned it. Yeah, I, I tricked him into saying it. Oh, yeah. I think I referenced yeah, it just... almost once. Well, I didn't reference it. I just talked about Jaren. That, yeah, you're right. That was the first reference. But yeah, just... This yeah, clapping for you. I know you guys don't like character models, but like the environments on the big screen, that's a chef. Oh, I'm sure. There. <laughs> okay, oh, no. so I didn't take I didn't take yeah. notes watching this because I just didn't want to. Uh, but I, I had very distinct thoughts that I knew I'd bring up later. One of which was, "This is just a tech demo, isn't it?" Not quite. Uh, I think partially because of the production woes, the animators just got a lot more time to butts around man, and stuff. <laughs> did it look pretty? Oh, yeah. Um, I just have a few more notes story-wise. Um, to this day, I still hate that those religious nuts, the Thunderclap people, came back and were the main villain at the end. I, I hated them so much. Mm-hmm. I mean... You mentioned it earlier, the shark fin and the cloud visual, pretty good. That was the best thing that they provided for the movie. Yeah. That was it. The, they did not need to come back. I think the way the story was heading, it should have been just a series of disconnected vignettes. Yeah. Probably would have been the best thing for it. Yeah, like Finding Nemo didn't have a villain. I mean, it had like Bruce and the sharks as like yeah, an antagonist. Yeah, but that movie but was as good. A, I know, I'm using that as an example of a good movie. It could have been like, I feel like it was trying the to The actual like... ending really should have incorporated those other humans more. Like, the third act really should have been Arlo dealing with the fact that Spot had other things he wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wasn't there a DreamWorks movie with cave people at one point? Croods. The Croods? Well, are you talking about the Croods or are you talking about Croods 2? What? There's there a, was a second one? Too? It's coming out this year, I think. Why? Who I asked for that? I love okay, that I remember seeing commercials for that when I was like 16. You would have been like 10. So you would have been like the target audience for it. Yeah, I loved that. I went to go see it with my dad. It was really good. I've never seen it, but I remember seeing commercials and being like, oh, that is very good. You would actually probably like it. Or I okay. Think. I remember, I'll give it a shot. It was good. Like, it wasn't even... No, it was really good. They had a really good character development. The animation was nice. It was fun. Very dramatic. You might cry at the end. But it's oh, good. lovely. I might, I might give it a look. What I've heard about Croods, like, I, I passed on it when it first came out. It didn't look like my kind of thing. But I have yeah. heard it's one of the more underrated DreamWorks. It's Maybe I'll so enjoy good. it. I really like it. Um, I did think about the Croods while I was watching it. Because I thought about Spot and I saw his little family. I was like, why are they making a Croods moment happen? He kind of reminded me of... Uh, Darwin, uh, Donnie from the Wild Thornberries. Nora, that's way before your time. You don't know who that is. Oh, much, uh, much further than her time. Yeah. Yeah. This <laughs> is mine and Daniel's time. It's a cartoon on uh, Nickelodeon about a girl who could talk to animals, and her family had a like reality show, like a Steve Irwin type show, uh, and they traveled like all across the world. And there is a little brother who uh, 
was like raised by monkeys and they adopted them. Kind of remind me of that, but not as funny. Hmm. My mom just I'm... laughed, and I can't tell if it was what you said or if she saw something else. Is she listening to us to record? <laughs> Mom? Hold on one second. <laughs> That's great. Were you laughing or is Mom just going to be our next guest? She's the standout yeah. character who, like, steals the show. Oh. <laughs> No, she didn't laugh at you, but that was funny what she said. What did she say? All right. I'll tell you later. <laughs> or, I don't know. I'll tell you when we get off track again. <laughs> oh. oh, you mean ten minutes from now? Yeah. Maybe five? <laughs> yeah. Ten. You underestimate us, Jaren. Anyway. I, I only have one more story note. Um, I'm an easy mark for bittersweet endings. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, I liked the ending. So, Spock right, getting yeah. adopted. That was nice. Yeah, that was <laughs> like, nice. Yeah, this. So many things it could have been. And uh, the production woes kept it from all of that. Let's yep. discuss that because, like oh, Brave, wait, that's more story. interesting than. I have a few story notes as well. Oh, Nora, go ahead and shoot. Okay, so I also have questions. Or, well, okay, so my issue with this whole movie is that it seems very chopped up. Each little segment is sort of there. And I, it, I see what you mean with the Finding Nemo thing. It is like they encounter different things, but it seems like they can't pick a theme and they keep going back and forth between ideas. So the movie just progresses eventually. The yeah, Thunder with Finding Clap, Nemo. Yeah. With Finding Nemo, it was it was a case of that story was so expertly plotted and paced. Each event led naturally into the next one. Yeah, yeah. versus and the good dinosaur war. That were like you know funny and memorable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the good dinosaur. The only plot points that like naturally lead into each other is Arlo being chased by the thunderclappers, leading to the T Rexes. Yeah. Everything else is extremely disconnected. Yes. Um, so it, and the pig thing also seemed choppy to me. At times it's very slow and then very fast and it would happen sporadically. But the thunderclappers were terrible characters. I hated them with my whole heart being in soul. They, they are not very, good. I will not defend annoying. them. I'll defend this movie. I won't defend them. They're very annoying. I think the most gruesome scene in Pixar animation was with them. I had to pause the movie when they're like, look at this little critter. They literally throw him up in the air and he puts him in his mouth and eats him and half of his body is hanging out. (laughs) I'm sorry. Whose idea was that? (laughs) Who had that idea? And why are there so many cults in this movie? That rhino old man had his own cult thing. The thunderclappers with the storm will provide is a whole cult thing. I know they're just supposed to be groups, but I swear they're cults. And I am not a fan. (laughs) Double dose of cults in my Pixar film. (laughs) And another big storyline issue I've already discussed is why, why, why did they get high? Why did an infant (laughs) boy and a child dinosaur get high preceded by a montage where they switch heads and bodies and float through the sky to make a horrifying animation moment (laughs) that no one asked for ever. No one asked for it, but I loved it. That was hilarious. So much. That should make me laugh out loud in theaters. It made me laugh out loud again. It's so disturbingly disgusting that it's amazing. I love it. Listen, not I needed. hate myself, but I don't hate myself that much. It's not needed. <laughs> Why is it that these child characters are bonding finally after they get high? <laughs> Why 
why is that how they bond? Oh, I guess they call it the they don't call it the Stone Age for nothing. Nora, you and the homies and never started tripping balls when you're hanging out. No, when I was in preschool, I didn't be like, "Hey guys, let's light one up." Like, no. <laughs> he can't. Spot. Uh, I don't even know how old Spot is, but he can't be more than three or four. He looks like no, a he's not that young. Toddler. You think a four-year-old could? He's not that uh, ice age baby. Listen, he I would say Spot is probably under seven, but I don't think he's four. Have you seen Sonny in the um the oh my gosh, um, Who's Sonny? Sonny and blah blah blah. Oh my god, Sonny and Cher. No, no. Why have I forgotten? That's way before your time. Before mine even. Events. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. She's an infant, and she crawls around with her teeth. If she can do it, a, a three-year-old can do it. <laughs> And she's not even barely one. I, I, I would love to talk about a series of unfortunate events. Because I really like the series. I, mean, I love series of unfortunate events. The I tone of that series is vastly different from The Good Dinosaur, though. Yes, it is. Shut up, Dale. Quit trying to get us on track. <laughs> He's not wrong. Well, no, I, I don't think wrong. we were off track. I don't think we were off track. Like Nora was talking about how she was relating it to this other thing. And I said... Well, Fair they're not enough. really <laughs> But now we're getting off track. Yeah, but there's just so many sequences that aren't needed at all. And they're in there, and I'd be okay with them if they were good, but they're not. They're just annoying. This is the studio that made Ratatouille. Ratatouille is an amazing film. Don't you ever? Wait, no, 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 no. I'm saying as I'm saying it. That's their masterpiece. Oh, okay. I'm, okay. I'm saying say... like this is. Okay, we're good. It's like saying the guy who made the Mona Lisa also made just uh, the banana on the wall art. Crappy deviant art OCs. <laughs> Yummy. It's like, I mean, I, I don't really hate any sequence in this film. Uh, the Thunderclapper stuff, kind of bad, but I don't hate it. I hated it. <laughs> I mean, you've expressed why. Don't worry. <laughs> and uh, oh, we know. And also, I hate how they make their characters a very vicious stereotype, if you know what I'm getting at. <laughs> uh, which stereotype? The um, yeah, Thunderclappers, they're kind of doing a um they're, they're super they have southern accents and they're rather cult religious aggressive with their belief and i was like that's kind of extreme and i'm not a fan of that thank you you're not a fan of making fun of cultist okay <laughs> no not the cultist but i don't know it just felt like they were sort of making fun of the whole i don't know i mean they're not wrong, but I don't know. I didn't like I just didn't like their characters and how they also kind of creeped me out with their whole sayings, which is why I'm convinced they're a cult, but I don't know. I mean, they are. <laughs> and this movie couldn't, I know my point I just made didn't make any sense, but I just, I don't know. I didn't like their, I, why is everyone Western? <laughs> or Southern? Because or, it's know. a Western. <laughs> This movie needs to pick a theme. Are you just going to be the vast nature experience? Are you going to be dinosaurs? Or are you going to be a country cowboy? I mean, you could probably combine the three and make a good movie, but they didn't, so... (laughs) Yeah, this this movie doesn't know if it's a Kurosawa film or a John Ford film. (laughs) (laughs) I just... Laughs tastefully. (laughs) I just also couldn't decide if the Thunderclappers were some freaky cult religion that was trying to bring everyone into their thunderclapping ways, or if they were stoners, because they also gave off that vibe. I mean... No, they, they were cult. There's something of, like, a Venn diagram between some sto- stoners and some cultists. I, I sure. Sure. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Don't need the Venn diagram. <laughs> Beautiful. I just oh. so many issues. <laughs> yeah. 
It's a trash baby. It really is. At the same time, the last 30 minutes are entertaining, though. And I did not like, I did not like when he sees the human man. Because I thought that was Spot's dad and Spot was just wrong and that he was alive. And then Arlo saw him and was like, oh, no, you're mine. You're going with my family. Even though they had that beautiful moment when they were talking about their families. And he completely ignores their main purpose to find family. Like, I know Spot has to be with him, but there needs to be a bigger moment there or something, buddy. And then you can kind of, from that scene, guess that, oh, that's how he's going to end up with him, even though he only saw him for 10 seconds. So it sort of ruins the whole thing for me. But it was a nice attempt, I guess. I mean, like I said, the third act needed to focus on Spot and Arlo. Um going their separate ways as opposed to putting it in at the very end. Yeah. And Arlo is annoying. He is very annoying. He really is. Well, I then you should like be happy that much. he gets beat up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not even that. You don't want that, but like you want him to succeed, but at the same time... Uh... He spends most of this movie looking like a bruised pear. Like, they do yeah. not hold back on making him look beaten up. At times, he has some of the issue that his dad's character development had. Because the dad is literally split between two personalities. Most of the time, he's this big, caring father figure that loves his children and is trying to teach in the ways of the world. But then, he's kind of a careless, brute, we have to be strong and do this, and you have to man up and show the way. And that stereotypical, the dad's hard on the son because he isn't. I mean, there was there was one scene where that happened, and that's because he was frustrated with Arlo. I wouldn't really call that split personality. No, he does it in the whole thing where he's like, "You have to get your mark. You have to get your mark. You have to do this." And he yeah, but he's not being a dick about it. Yeah, but he doesn't even stop his brother from like he barely stops his brother from like picking on him. I just don't like his vibes. (laughs) I just. (laughs) I feel like he's Uh, being nice, but that underlining, like, I wasn't surprised when he did that because I was sort of getting those vibes throughout his vibes, vibes, those feelings throughout the opening scenes. I I just had issues. I mean, I disagree on the split personality thing. He's really not. I feel like it's. I was sad when he died because he was. I think he was genuinely a good dad. I just question his parenting skills. But I genuinely thought he was a good father. And I was very sad when he died. I was not expecting that. But then I immediately thought, why am I watching The Lion King in dinosaur form? So. uh, I mean, I still disagree with the dad. I mean, maybe maybe it's just because I've seen this movie in extra time compared to you. So I have a clearer picture of that early segment. I mean, he's not... He's never really a jerk to Arlo outside of the kind of cold way that Arlo gets cut out. That's not intentional. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the only worse. time, the only time he's like you know actively angry is when his patience runs out towards that last scene with him, and that's. I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to say understandable, but like I, I see the through line of his patience running out. Therefore, yeah. he's a little angry. Yeah. I don't Split know. personality I... just seems like a, an extreme way to classify it. <laughs> okay, that's true. But um, I don't know. I just felt maybe it was just that last part, but I felt they kind of need to pick whether he's going to be a patient um, figure or he's going to be rash and rush him off into the woods and do this sort of montage thing. And I was not enjoying the movie at that point anyway. But the death got me. But I also don't like how Arlo will try to, he tries to use it, his dad's teachings throughout the movie, but he doesn't use the right ones. He, like, he'll be like, this is, this is, I have to do this, or I can't remember. There's, like, a specific, like, it's always when he's with Spot, though. And it's not even, like, the this is your fault thing, but it's when he gets serious all of a sudden, but then he immediately cowers back. I can't think of a specific time, but he does it a few times in some of his mannerisms, and it's kind of annoying. Because I know what you're talking about. It's not. It's not really that he's following his advice. It's just that he's angry at Spot, and then 
once yeah. he realizes uh, he's still terrified of Spot, he can't actually follow through on anything. Yes. yes. That's exactly what it is. Those moments annoyed me as well. Because, well, and why is it called the good dinosaur? He's not That good. was my big question. He's not good. Why is it called Brave? Don't even start. <laughs> <laughs> I actually know what was going on with that. That was a name picked very early into production before the Troubles happened. And by the time the Troubles had ended, um, they were too deep in marketing to change the movie. This movie is called something else overseas. A lot of European countries do have like different names for movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, um, I think in England or one country over in Europe, like Zootopia is called Zootopolis. I love Zootopia. Yeah, and um, this movie over there is just called Arlo and Spot, which uh, that's about as fine a name as you're going to get. <laughs> Pretty spot on, if you ask me. Hey. hey. So I think that is a good transition to talking about the troubles. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. So yeah, Nora, since you don't really follow behind the scenes stuff, you how much do you know about the behind the scenes for this movie? Let's let's see about that. Okay. Let me clarify. When it comes to behind the scenes, either I know everything or nothing. And pre use I know nothing. So go ahead. <laughs> All right. So this movie back in two thousand nine, Bob Peterson came up with the idea to do a dinosaur movie at Pixar. And he was, he was a real, real happy boy about it. He got very excited. And so they, they launched into production. And it went all right for a little while. But things got bad. In a, um, not too far in when Bob Peterson realized, oh, I don't know how I'm going to end this movie that we've started production on. Hmm. Mm. Oh, oh, Jaren left. <laughs> He's he finally had enough of a good dinosaur. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, I said, my my earbuds. There's a button on them that I actually pressed, and yeah. He couldn't take the dinosaur anymore. <laughs> so, uh, where was I? He was he was struggling with the ending. He could not think of an ending, and around 2013. Um, the movie was originally supposed to come out in 2014, so a year out from release, and he still hadn't figured it out. He had no idea what he was doing. You should usually come up with the ending before you make the rest of the... Uh, right? So you but, can have hinted leading up events, but you know, it's fine, whatever. So, it was not going well, and... Uh, Pixar, I think specifically John Lasseter decided, okay, you've had your fun. You're off the movie now. Mm. And he got kicked off the project. And co-director Peter Son became the sole director. So he basically had to finish a movie with no ending that was due to come out in one year. Mm. Hooray. Hooray. So that's why it's seemed so rushed and unplanned the entire movie yeah so what he did um the first thing he did he got the film delayed so pixar pushed it from 2014 to 2015 they got a few more months of production on it and so he rewrote most of the movie and this keep in mind like they were so deep in production they'd already recorded a lot of it so They had to bring back uh, some of the voice actors. They had to hire new voice actors. And they basically had to re-record the entire movie. Oh. Yay. So they did that. And they just kind of... They kind of forced the movie to be made. Um, They wrote an ending. And they had to, like, rush to get the final animation done. Like... They had less time on this movie than Brad Bird had on Ratatouille, which is... That's what I was about to ask, because I was going to say, I don't feel pity for them at first. Well, I do, 
but didn't Ryan Chewie have like very little time and they made something amazing? The the masterpiece. Yeah, so, but that movie also had Brad Bird. <laughs> it also who, has yeah. filmmaking like, force of nature. Yeah. Versus Peter San, who previously had only done a short film at Pixar. Mm. Uh, it's certainly capable. The good have dinosaur. You guys seen Partly cloudy. That yeah, film? that was all right, I guess. It, the good dinosaur. It really, Trash Baby is very accurate because it's not awful. Like I'm entertained by it, and it has very good moments. It's just so chopped up and not together and random yeah, they, moments. That they needed more scenes like the firefly scene with the dead parents. Or, oh, yes, that or just weird. less storms. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> this is a problem I had since I first saw it. There are four storms in this movie that only exist to push the plot along. It's amazing how much they use that as a crutch. Could you do something, anything else? I just wish... It seems like the only obstacle are the thundercloud birds. That's really about it. They're like the Wickersham brothers. Oh, but the Wickersham brothers are amazing. Played they by are. Nora Jones. <laughs> and the Thunderclappers are not. I said that to intentionally make you mad. <laughs> but the Wickershams are much more amazing than the Thunderclappers. Uh, by the way, if you couldn't tell, I was a Wickersham brother and Susicle. Very fun. Anyway. I, was, I was an independent contractor oh, nice. with them. You were a what? An independent contractor. <laughs> I wasn't a Wicker you were, Sham brother, but you were black. I, I worked with you, gentlemen. Hmm. Well, so, anyway. <laughs> so yeah, this movie. They had to rewrite it. They had to scrap a lot of finished stuff and they had to force it to be done in basically 15 months so it rough yeah (laughs) it didn't go well be like that sometimes lost the original creative voice much like with brave uh but at least brave like had time (laughs) brave yeah at least brave kind of feels like a like a complete movie it may not be yeah. a good movie, but no, at that, least feels... Yeah, no, Brave. Yeah. <laughs> like, at least it I'm not, feels I'm not competent. denying that. I do think Brave is a complete movie. Yeah. I, but Not a particularly good one, but it is a movie. How I would describe it, Brave kind of um, is flatlining the whole time. Yeah. The Pixar for me has peaks and... Or The Good Dinosaur for me has peaks and valleys. And I appreciate its peaks enough that it rises above... Just a mediocre thing for me. I will say the scene, there's a very good scene in The Good Dinosaur. And it's the scene where he becomes unconscious and he sees his dad, which once again is Lion King, Mufasa coming and talking to him. But Mm -hmm. that is a very good scene. It was all right. It didn't do anything for me, but it was all right. I was very captivated. I liked the way they did it. I liked the way he called him. And then he finally realized it's my fault. And he stopped and he turned. It was very good directing on Peter Son's part, I thought, in that scene. But that's just me. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll give it that. I'll give it when he wakes up, yeah. That was the only really connection I saw that was well fulfilled from earlier to now. If they had done more with the realizing his own faults necessarily... I think I could have been more okay with Arlo. But yeah, Arlo they, just they needed, needed a little more of that. Yeah, Arlo really needs more of a character dynamic. He's just kind of scared most of the movie. He is, or angry he's at pretty Spot. much just an archetype, like I said. Yes. Spot is a more dynamic character than he is. Spot is a far more dynamic character. <laughs> I like yeah, Spot. I mean, like... Okay. There are scenes. There are scenes like Arlo talking to his dead dad, the T Rex campfire, the fireflies with the dead family. Like, there's enough here for me to say, yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's good. I like the whole scene with the where they're falling over in the waterfall. That animation is very good. I enjoy watching that scene. The water in this movie is just 
is beautiful. It looks like real water. And I I agree with your idea about the dinosaurs contrasting. I think that's an interesting way to look at it. And I hope that's what they're going for. But it did bother me just visually. Like, oh, if they had I, done I can absolutely see it. Just because it works for me, it's not going to work for everybody. I like the I idea. Mean, I just don't like the design they chose to contrast. I like the photorealism here a lot more than I do in The Lion King. But... <laughs> But that's mostly because this that's mostly because this movie knows what a color is. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's just not Shots fired. They they really did just kind of combine the Lion King finding Nemo and a little bit of the crews and they made this. <laughs> yep, it oh, It's and either a uh, dragon. <laughs> It's a, a an Akira Kurosawa film mashed with the John Ford film that's animated with dinosaurs. They tried real, real hard to make it work. Didn't really work. No. You tried. They it's tried a trash really baby. hard. It's, it's a trash it's baby that was thrown in the dumpster on prom night. It is just... It, it really looks <laughs> like it was just thrown together. In many respects, it was. <laughs> it really was. It makes so much more sense now that I'm hearing that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what could have saved this movie. Like, if they had delayed it to 2016 and had Finding Dory come out in 2015, like the original plan was, oh, maybe it would have been next. better. Oh, yeah, that is next. I don't mind Finding Dory. Like, Poor it's not Jared. my favorite, but I liked it enough. Poor Jaren. He has to deal with the good dinosaur and finding Dory back to back. And then Cars 3, which I don't hate. Yeah, it'll be... Hey, Coco is... It's a bit of a stretch. And I really love that one, so... Yeah, it's a stretch to our next original Pixar film. What's after Coco? Incredibles 2, then Toy Story 4. I love Incredibles 2. Really? I love that movie. I saw it twice. We'll be getting to it. It's we'll we'll get into it. It has its own production things. For now, I'll say it was all right. Well, I love it. There's so many Edna mode scenes, and it's (laughs) (laughs) she is my second favorite Pixar character. This movie really could have used just a stand outside character like Edna. Very close I mean, second. The, the T-Rexes are nice, but they're not really standout. The pet collector, I mean, he's only in there the once, and he doesn't affect much, so I don't think he counts. The more I'm thinking no. about the pet collector scene, the more I like it. I was just so thrown off by it at first, because I wasn't expecting it, because it was one of those random things. I started coming around to it when they started calling out the names, because he did this monotone, like, spiky, barky, rummage. Rascal. And this is Debbie. <laughs> one one good thing I'll give this movie again is uh, the poster. It's just a uh, spot oh, and Arlo yeah, in low poster. lighting with the fireflies. It's a beautiful poster. Yeah, very solid. They tried. Jaren, I think he said more positive things about this movie than you probably thought you were going to. <laughs> well, that's the thing, though. I, I look for the positives. <laughs> Jaren, yeah. we've switched. All I've done is said negative. <laughs> When have you I said only negative things? This no, is, I'm just kidding. We're discussing on this show. We discuss literally some of my favorite movies ever made. I know. I'm just messing and Cars with you. too. And, and Cars too. Dinosaur. And Cars <laughs> too. No, I feel bad. I've really bashed on this movie. I'm sorry. It's okay. The Trash Baby has taken abuse over the years. I did enjoy the last half. The T Rexes were the best characters. Yeah, yeah they were cool. I think I designs. you really have to get to the part where Arlo gets lost. And I feel like. Because all the opening stuff, it, it doesn't really do much for you. Once we get started on Arlo is lost and he has to get the journey home, the movie picks up. Yes. And maybe. Maybe if they had found a way to cut out a lot of the early bits and make the movie really officially start there 
Yeah, I wonder if that was like holdover from the original. Like, you know what would have been cool if they had started the movie where he's waking up and he's already lost, and then you have flashbacks. Oh, in media rays. You know, I I kind of want to take this movie, re-edit it, and see if that makes it better. I feel like it would. Like, other than the, like, cut out the scene of Arlo being born. And just have flashbacks to his life oh. there as he's... I'm yeah. fascinated to see if that will work. That would be... And you'd but have to probably... That won't out. solve all the problems. I... But that could do a lot for this movie. Yeah, I think that would be so good. Wait. <laughs> Somebody call Pixar. Dang. Yeah. I almost want to just take tomorrow and just like... <laughs> Download the movie and try this and see if it works. Please do. Oh, I have a question. Disney Plus, do they have some protection thing? I don't know. But I tried to screenshot a picture of the high yes. screen. Because I was so, so just, wow. And it showed up black on my phone. I was like, okay, Disney, I see you. Yeah, it does that. I think yeah, Netflix that's, does it that's copyright protection. Okay, that, that makes sense after I, I tried. Like... Well, I just had to go on the interwebs and find a picture. And luckily it pulled up right away because that is a horrific moment. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just stuck on that now. Like, remove a lot of dialogue. Like, have a lot of this just be Arlo kind of wandering around silently with Spot and then cut in the flashbacks when needed, do a lot more visual storytelling. Yeah, I genuinely like that. That See? that that could have been a thing. I should have been directing this film. Look at you, number <laughs> three. Thank you. Just build a time machine, go back to Peterson and say, we figured it out. Oh, we and then you can connect... We have to go back. Then you can make Arlo have more depth because each time something happens, you can flash back to a scene and see where it comes from. And then you can yeah, connect to him overpowering later on. Because he falls down a lot. He gets knocked unconscious a lot. There are a lot of good places to just stick flashbacks. Like, Yeah. But he gets back up again, and no one ever keeps him down. Yep. He also learns how to swim in this movie Ooh, from watching a child. Dad dying would be such a good moment because you'd be building up to it. You'd be getting hints, and he could hint more about, oh, oh it would be good. Ah, oh, man, I just want to try that now. You'll never know until you try. You never know until you don't glow and grow. You never shine if you don't grow. Hey, now, you're an all-star. Hey, now. Well, yeah, dang. We found a better good dinosaur. <laughs> the good-er dinosaur. And then you could actually make it the good dinosaur by giving him some character development to... It would have been good if, like, he saved Spot somehow. So Spot just saved well, I mean, him. He does save Spot at the end. And he jumps yeah, in front of the flood to protect him. He does, but that whole scene bothers me because I think it's so selfish that he was like, no, you can't even interact with those people. We have to go home. Yeah, because Arlo is scared. Like, he's, he's become a little braver, but he does not have the, the courage to do it without Spot. This movie could have been called Brave. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you could have called Brave the Good Princess or whatever. No. <laughs> She's defying the stereotype of princess. Ah! Let's not open up that can of worms again. You could have called Brave the Bond, maybe. But then I'd think James Bond, so no. I Just keep call it phasing bond. in and out of the call. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm all oh. right. Are you sure you're not just muting us by accident? <laughs> no, so... we're not doing that again. That was so funny. <laughs> my phone's at 5%. Let me grab my charger really fast. Well, yeah. Um, I think we've said all we can say on this movie. Is there 
any other Yeah, I don't things? know what else to say, really. Yeah. Uh, we managed to stay mostly on track for this one. I think part of it is just this is the first time you guys have seen it, and also there's a lot to talk about. I'm back. <laughs> with this. Hey, but Nora. I like what you were saying. Oh, hey, yeah, kid. I feel like this one we've had a really good discussion on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I also feel like I talked way too much, so I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. We had a good discussion. And it was a golden experience. We may have, we may have a better discussion next time, question mark? Uh, Who knows? I, just, I don't want to talk about it. Did, I, don't, I don't hate it. I don't even really dislike it. It's just boring. Would you say that you like the good dinosaur or Finding Dory better? Finding Dory. I like it better. It's a more cohesive movie, but I still don't like it. I like it. I mean, I don't know. I just don't think Finding Nemo needed a sequel. I didn't really need to see the continuation of that. Yeah, Based but up, Andrew so, Stanton needed money. Uh, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Finding Nemo yeah. was the last episode where it was pretty just much, me and Daniel. Yeah, pretty much every Pixar movie from this point onward has a really interesting, like, just behind-the-scenes story. This point onward, yeah. you did that <laughs> intentionally, <laughs> didn't you? Because, I mean, I think only Cars 3 might be the exception, as in, like, there's no... Like fascinating behind the scenes reason why it exists the way the good dinosaur I really or just... even Inside Out or Finding Dory or Incredibles 2 or Toy Story 4 or Coco has. Yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. I really just think they're running out of ideas. Well, like, good thing from now general. on. Like all movies in general. Like I was literally looking at the movies playing last week and every single one was either a remake or a sequel, or some movie that kind of the plot had already been basically done five million times. I, I wonder what how movies that... were playing near you. Hmm. Well, movies were playing near you because well, Little Women. I, got I love Little Women. Women. Frozen. I, I just want to see Little Women. It looks good. Oh, it's so good. Sari's Ron. I don't know how you pronounce her name. How you pronounce her name? Sari. Sari's Ronan. Oh, Little Women's really good. Sari's Ronan. If you're listening to this podcast on the point 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 one 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 chance that you are, give me a call sometime. Uh, <laughs> I ain't given up just yet. The acting was amazing. It was quite. Oh, oh yeah, I mean, I like that Tim- Timothy Chalamet. He's a he's a bright young man. Yeah, he was. I he's say. About that. I say that Timothy he's like Chalamet is about to have a freaking year. Dude, like, my sh- dude, I'm looking forward to that. What does he have else coming up? Dune, directed he's by. He's going to be in the French yeah. Dispatch and Dune. Like, holy crap! I mean, Sabri's Ronan's got an interesting film coming up. I'm actually really, really interested in it for reasons. <laughs> but I'm going anyway. to send her call. Uh, me sitting in front of my phone and saying hey you should give me a call sometime <laughs> send her the good dinosaur <laughs> <laughs> just like just send her a DVD copy of the good not even a blu-ray oh, a DVD left. copy of the good he dinosaur He's gone. <laughs> I didn't Bye, mean to do that it's the freaking button on my earbud <laughs> well stop hitting it stop it's an it. accident well, I'm trying to, my earbud is falling out of my ear so I'm trying to put it back in I don't believe your lies well, anyway I was just saying Send, send her a DVD copy of The Good Dinosaur and say, hit up my DMs. <laughs> <laughs> she will have no context for what that means. These are my earbuds. Oh, are we doing video now? Hold on. No, 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 no. <laughs> Hi. Hi. It's been a minute. It's been um, long day right, we know the video. podcasts have devolved once the video cameras come out <laughs> yeah no one will see this old face of mine wait what well, at least you look like you belong in your environment unlike Arlo <laughs> oof They're... I mean pick a environment plotline Pixar pick one you have three going on pick one 
Ugh. Ugh. Nora, I'm real proud of you. You left your mark. Thank you. <laughs> this I'm podcast ready. is us leaving our mark. Yep. What is... Anyway, what I've is... been Daniel. Oh. Were we not signing off? <laughs> sure, we... Oh, I, I've been Nora. <laughs> I've been Jaren somehow. And that was The Good Dinosaur. Enjoy Finding Dory sometime next week, I guess.